Alright guys, welcome back to part 3 of our API with Python and Flask. Um, hopefully you've watched the first two. Those are pretty important for what I'm going to talk about. So what we're really going to do is we're just going to take what I did in part 1 and part 2 and combine them and put the uh, calls, and well not put the calls, but use data from our database and also store data into our database with the get method and the post method. So I wanted to use the SQLite database. Um, so I don't have it on this computer and I thought maybe it's good to show you guys what I'm going to use. You can type in SQLite database browser or DB browser in Google and you want this first guy right here, this uh, DB browser for SQLite. And this is really all it's going to look like. Well that's what it looks like on Mac. Uh, but I'm on Windows and I think we're in the download. No we're not. Okay. For some reason it looked highlighted so we were on it. Um, and we want, let me see what we want, we want the standard installer. So we're going to download that, we're going to use this to create our SQLite database, we're going to name the columns, and uh, you know create tables and all that good stuff. And then we're going to use those tables to add data to and read data from in our API. So it's downloaded, let's go ahead and get this running. Okay. Yeah, obviously, I'm not going to read all that. <laughs> um, and I found that the program menu is, you can put it on a desktop too, but I always just put it on the program menu. And you can choose to throw it on your desktop if you want. I think that's all we need to do. So let's just hit next and install. And it will throw that in there. So I'll skip all this and we'll come back to it when I have it open. All right, so I have it open here, and then we're just going to create a new database with this button here, and it'll ask us where we want to place it. I'm going to put it on my desktop, and this is just going to be called like test, and it's going to end in .db. Okay, so we're going to create a new table here, and this is going to hold all of our games. We're going to keep the same uh, theme as we did before with the video games. And of course, if you're doing this at home and you're following along, you can do whatever data uh, that you please. But the table name is going to be games, then we can add fields. So the first one's going to be ID, it's going to be an integer. And we're going to enable private key and auto increment. Auto increment just means as a new one's added, we don't need to give it an ID, it'll automatically make it one more than the previous one in the table. And I'll show you how what I mean uh, when we start adding things. But it makes it a lot easier. And then NN is not null. We don't need to worry about that since it's a private key and U is unique, same as before. Um, since a private key it's unique already. Okay, so we have ID and then we can do console and that one is going to be text. And I'm just gonna leave all these blank. Uh, and then name of the game, right? What's our other one? And that's also going to be text, and I'll just leave it like this. Um, you could make the name of the game not null, and same with console, but... Um, sorry, I'm drinking my coffee. But I'm just going to leave it as it is. So we'll hit OK, and that will create our table right here. So now if we browse data, um, you can see that there are no rows. And this is the filter, so if you wanted, whoops, I'm not even looking at the right one. Let's browse this table. There aren't any rows here. So if we're going to add a row, um, you can see it automatically made it ID of one. And if we did a second row, it does it for two, and so on and so forth. So it makes it really nice that it kind of does that automatically for us. So let's do PS4, and what was the first game we did? Call of Duty. Call of Duty, okay, and then I think Xbox and Overwatch was the second one, right? I'm just adding these, we'll write the changes. I'm just adding these so we can try the get um, call first. So now if I select all from games here, you can see we get those two rows that we created. Cool. So let's go ahead and I don't think we need to do anymore. You can see it's on my desktop. Um, it might be good in another screen to get the path of that. 
so let's go ahead and do that. So over here, I just uh, hovered over the DB and hit copy path. So I have it um, for when we connect to the database. So what we need to do to use SQLite is import SQLite 3. And it's one of those packages that's already in Python, so we don't have to worry about it uh, anymore. I'm just pulling up some notes I have in my other screen. I thought I had more than that. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Just so I don't get lost and tell you the, <laughs> the wrong thing, I have notes up, as always, um, in my other screen. So, so we have imported SQLite 3, and now we can just start by... Um, kind of what we did before. Let's get rid of this games list that we created in the first video. And now we are going to get the games from the database rather than that list that we had created. So let's go ahead and let's start with the get games route and the get games definition. Um, so we got the console there. That's good, so they can specify console. And now let's go ahead and make our connection to the SQLite database. So it's SQLite3.connect, and this is the path of where your database is. And in my case, um, it has these backslashes, so we need to preface the string with an R, or it'll start throwing a fit like it did here. It'll give us a red squiggly saying that it doesn't understand it. So if we preface it with an R, everything will be good. So we now have our connection to our database, right? And now we can just uh, create our cursor. And I wasn't quite sure what the definition of a cursor was, and I so I looked it up just to share it with you guys. And a database cursor is a control structure that enables traversal over the records in that database. So just think of it as a vehicle to go through your database, I guess. So now we have to create a cursor object. I'm just going to call it cur. That's going to be equal to con, so the, the connection that we just created, dot cursor, and no parameters. OK. So now if we wanted to, we can write our SQL. So what would we do? All right, now we have to think about um, okay, so we're given a console. What would our SQL look like to retrieve all of the items in our database, or all of the rows of that particular console? So it would be something like select all from games where uh, console is equal to, and then it would be whatever the console variable is, right? But just for testing sake, let's just do PS4 and hard code it in here, and then you can see we get the PS4 row. So let's go ahead and copy that and throw it in here, and then put it in quotes, or double quotes, it looks like. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something you can do in Python with string interpolation. I hope I pronounced that right. But we can go ahead and essentially just add variables into our string by starting off with an F before our quotes. And then wherever you want to put the value of some kind of variable, you put these curly braces. And then we can put our console variable. Ah, OK. Hopefully that makes sense. So what it's going to read out is it's going to read out select star from games where console is equal to and then whatever this value is in single quotes. That's what adding the F in these squigglies do. Okay, So we have our SQL, we have our cursor. Now we can go ahead and just execute that. So let's do cur.execute and then pass in our SQL that we wrote. Okay, and then I'm going to keep this results with the empty um, 
empty list right here and set that equal to instead cur.fetch all. So that's going to give us all of the results that were given by running the SQL. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm just going to return the JSONified uh, results that we got. So let's test it. Let's see if it works. Let's go ahead and run it. Looks like it's good. So in Postman, I am just going to use one of the ones we did back in the day. Let's do this where console is equal to PS4 and see what happens. Oh, it did come back as a JSON object. Fantastic. That's really cool. Okay. Okay, cool. So it came back with all of the data. It came back with one PS4 and Call of Duty just as it is in the database, right? Cool. So let's try to clean some stuff up here and let's have the post and the get in the same route. And the way you can do that uh, is you can just add it to the methods here. And then we can say if request dot method method um, is equal to this is the get right it's going to do all of this and then else if request method is equal to post, we're going to do something else. So if they're making a get request at this route or this URL, uh, we're going to run all of this code. And if it's a post, we're going to run this code. So now what we need to do is we want to insert into the database um, some games. So let's say that they make a query string. So it's going to be the same as this part. So they're going to give us a console. And then they're also going to give us a name for a game. And this one's going to be called name in the query string, right? Now we basically do the same thing. And what we can do actually is we can take this, we can put it here. Um, so both can use that and we don't have to repeat ourselves again. Okay. Cool. So now we have our connection, we have our cursor, and we're going to have different SQL in both. Right. That makes sense. So now our SQL is going to be something like, uh, let's test it, insert into games. Um, and we're just going to pass in the console and the name values. And for an example, let's do PS4 and uh, Dark Souls, I think we did in our last video. So we'll run that. And now if I browse the data, you can see it refreshed and it gave us Dark Souls. Cool. That looks good. So let's make that our SQL. Uh, we'll put it into double quotes. And just as before, we can do the string interpolation. Though it might be better uh, to use parameters. And if you're interested in um, learning what those are, maybe we can do that in a separate video. Console and name. That makes sense. Okay. And yeah, so now we just do the cur.execute SQL. And we are good to go. We don't have to return anything. But if we want, we can return. Um, I think it comes first, the string. All good. And then 200. I think that's the way it goes. And you'll see what that does here in a second. So let's go ahead and run that again. Okay. So now instead of get, we're doing a post 
and we already have the console, so it's PS4. And name is going to be equal to, let me think of another very uh, popular video game. Why can't I think of any? I'm looking at Guitar Hero on my shelf. <laughs> Pretty old school. So let's send that. Why is it taking so long? So something came back. Not right. All oh, database is locked. Okay. So we're in the database right now. We need to close it in order to write to it. So save the changes made. Ah, that's probably as well why it didn't work because we made changes. Um, okay. So we closed the database and now let's go ahead and try it again. Nice. Came back with status 200 um, because we said return 200 and all good. And it returned. <laughs> all good. So now if we open up that database again, file, open database, there it is, and we browse it. It didn't commit it. Interesting. So I wonder if we have to commit as well. Okay, so let's try committing it. So I think I forgot a step. And after we, it's not gone. And after we do the insert, we actually need to commit it. So now, if we run this, uh, console's PS4, name is Guitar Hero, that looks good. Let's send that, it says all good. Ah, uh, yes, the commit is what tripped us up. So now we have a new one, as you can see, it auto-incremented, right? We didn't put an ID into this, it just knew to do it, which is great. And now if we wanted to, we can do Xbox and this one's going to be like Battlefield. Let's send that. That one says all good. And then if we refresh, and you can go on so on and so forth. All right. With this API call. And what's really nice is we clean it up a bit and we put both of them into one single route. Um, and we test it. Okay, is it a get request or if it's a post request? If it's get, Let's do this. If it's post, let's do this instead. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We got it set up with a SQLite database and it looks pretty slick now. We're actually doing something that you could see in the real world. Um, maybe in the next video, I will talk about briefly um, parameters, just so you don't get a SQL injection <laughs> happening to you in your API. And um, yeah, I, I, I think we can also talk about a few other things. In the next video, I'll, I'll try to come up with some stuff. But anyway, guys, I'm sorry if this was a longer video, but I hope you guys learned a lot in this video, um, and I hope to see you in the next one.